explained the other day, we left kind of at that, I wanted to explain the, this n squared mu zero a over L just simply based on logic. Now why should the inductance depend on area? Why should, in other words, why should the area be in the numerator and not in the denominator? Why should L be in the denominator and not in the uh, numerator? So explain, be able to explain that simply based on logic. So what I thought about is this, uh, imagine if we have two inductors that are connected lengthwise, okay? And uh, let's say everything about them is the same. So that uh, the, uh, the N here is the same, the A is the same, the L is the same. And let's say the, this one is also the same. What should the, the inductance total be of that, okay? So, uh, well, based on the fact that they add up uh, in series, right? They simply should just be n squared uh, a, a mu zero over L plus n squared mu zero a over L. So it should be 2n squared mu zero a over L. Okay, so in other words, uh, due to the fact that they are in series, they should, they should uh, give you an inductor that's a bigger inductor, okay? And if you now visualize it as one inductor with a length of equal to the total length, so imagine now that it is a one inductor whose area is the same, right? Its area is the same. And the L is the total length L1 plus L2. So according to our equation, L solenoid is going to be the n squared mu zero A over the total length, right? So what's going to happen? Let's try to make sense out of this equation. Let's see if this gives us the same answer as this gives us. If it does, then the equation makes sense. What's the n now? Well, the n is the total number of turns of this new solenoid, who is the combination of the previous two. Okay, so how many turns is there? Two n turns, right? Double the number of turns. And the magnetic field, when the magnetic field is set up, the magnetic field is going through all of those new turns. And the total length is twice the length of each one, right? So if I put that into the equation, 2n quantity squared, and the area of, the, of that is the same as the original a's, uh, and then the L total is 2L. So if the equation is right, it should predict that the inductance of this new ins, uh, uh, solenoid is exactly the same as adding them in series, okay? So 2n squared is uh, 4n, 4n squared mu zero, over, uh, mu zero a over 2l, and then what's 4 over 2? Two? 2. And you see it worked. Double the number of turns, and uh, the same a, double the length, it yields 2. So it's equivalent to adding each one in series. Okay, Okay. how about parallel? How about if you have two solenoids in parallel? And let's say again, they have the same number of turns, same number of, uh, same length, same area. According to the parallel equation, you're gonna have one over L, uh, one over L total is gonna be uh, L uh, over n squared a mu zero plus L over n squared a mu zero. You know, they're the same. Then when you add them and uh, you reciprocate it, you're going to have what? Uh, you're 
it gets cut in half, right? When you add them in uh, reciprocated. So they, they basically decrease each other's inductance. So now let's try to make sense out of that by arguing that this looks like it's a solenoid that is feather, right? It looks, it behaves like a solenoid which is a uh, feather like this. So it's got twice the area. You can almost imagine as if they're touching. So it, 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 it acts like two sol, it acts like a solenoid which has twice the uh, surface area. And the magnetic field, now when the magnetic field goes through, notice here when the magnetic field, when, when uh, you close the thing and the current goes through, the current has to split up between the two, right? So I1 and I2. So the magnetic field created here is B1, and the magnetic field created here is B2. Now, if they're the same, if they're the same inductance, then I1 and I2, B1 and B2 are all the same, you see? So it all just becomes the same thing. So I, B, and I, B. So now when we combine them into one solenoid, what would happen is it would be the equivalence of one B going through there, but since the B is cut in half here, it would be uh, half the magnetic field, and it would be equivalent to only going through half the number of turns, okay? So this is B over two going through half turns. Okay, here, here's the total B going through here. But here, if we're combining together, so it's the half the magnetic field strength because that one is cut in half, okay? And it's only going through half the number of turns, but the area is double. So according to the uh, L, L uh, solenoid equation, So now we're going to treat this as one solenoid with twice the area, half the number of turns. Okay, so it's got twice, uh, twice the area I should put here, and half the number of turns. So imagine the two solenoids are touching, uh, double the area. But half the number of turns because the magnetic field going through here is half the magnetic field going uh, through here. So now you put n over 2, and then you square that, n, uh, n squared over 4, and 2, 2 and the 4 cancel. And you get n squared a over uh, uh, a mu 0 over 2L. Okay, so in other words, two solenoids placed in parallel act as if they're one whole solenoid with half the number of turns as the original. Uh, this one is B, I, and N, B, I, and N, okay? This one is B over two, I over two, and N over two. Everything cut in half. So it acts as one solenoid with everything cut in half, and if you use the equation, it predicts the same answer as adding them in parallel. So the equation therefore makes sense. Okay. So now we're going to